Hi and welcome to the next video tutorial about the web center. Today I'm going to cover portlets and interportlet communication uh, with the GSR286 standard. So since PS3 web center fully supports GSR286 standard uh, which is a big improvement over the GSR168 standard. So this is what I'm going to cover now. Uh, as a demo I'm going to build two portlets uh, one that takes one parameter and the next one will show the value of that parameter and it will pass uh, the value to each other. And in the next section I will show you how to consume these portlets and how it and how WebCenter will wire these portlets together. So first of all we're starting uh, our JDeveloper and we'll create a new application. So in the new gallery uh, when you install the web center extensions you should be able to create a portlet producer application so this is what we're going to do now we specify a name portlet demo for example and everything can be set to the default and when you take a look at the project you see it's empty it doesn't have any file in it this is because all the files will be created when we create our first portlet. So this is what we are going to do now. Right click on your portlet application, select new and from the web tier select portlets and you can select Oracle PDK or standard based Java portlet. We are going to create standard based Java portlets because Oracle PDK Java portlets are it's in fact an older standard that was be created by Oracle before the portlet standard uh, existed. So Oracle Portal uses this standard and by doing so you can create portlets that are um, compatible with both WebCenter and older versions of Oracle Portal. But in WebCenter uh, when you create portlets you'll always be using standard based Java portlets. So press OK. And then we need to give our portlet a name. So the first portlet will be the input portlet. You also need to specify a class because each uh, portlet should extend to the generic portlet class. Uh, this is this, uh, this is specified in the standard. So um, we need to specify a class, and JDeveloper will create create this class for us. So we don't need to bother. We need to specify a package, and that's it. In the second page, we can specify the display name. This will be used, uh, I think, as the default title. And it will also be used in the resource catalog of WebCenter. Keywords can be used to find a portlet in the resource catalog. Uh, you can change this if you want, but uh, for this demo purpose, we don't need to specify anything special. Now, as the content types, this is a very important uh, step in creating the portlet. Because in this step, you will uh, decide whether or not you are going to create an ADF portlet or a standard regular GSP portlet. Now, because we are working with WebCenter, we are creating an ADF portlet. There are some limitations about ADF portlets because all ADF portlets are rendered in an iframe. So this means that uh, from the moment the portlet is rendered on the page, the size of the portlet will remain the same. So if your content grows, then you will get scroll bars, which is not really uh, that user friendly but it's due to the limitations of ADF and I think Oracle is working to solve this but I think it will be uh, solved in 12C or G or whatever Oracle is deciding so for now we're stuck with the iframe uh, rendering of ADF portlets so the edit mode is the mode where we can uh, personalize the portlet so uh, I will talk about this in the next step or we can also specify the ADF faces uh, GSP for it. In the next step we can add preferences to the portlet. So there are some people that uh, sometimes confuse preferences with parameters. Preferences are personalizations that you can do on portlets. So each preference uh, can be set by every user separately. While Parameters uh, are, well, exactly what they are, parameters, so that you can uh, communicate with other portlets, but they do not 
uh, personalize the portlet. Uh, it's more customization. So and the preferences you can add par uh, you can add preferences so that you can personalize the portlet. So for example, if you are building uh, a new portlet, then you might add a preferences for the category so that each user can personalize which category he wants to see in the portlet or the number of news items he wants to see in the portlet. So these are typical preferences that you would uh, add here. In the security roles, you can map security roles to your portlet, um, but we are not going to uh, specify anything. You can specify caching. Normally you do not specify caching here, but this is uh, this is how the GSR 286 standard works. So they say that you can specify caching in uh, the portlet.xml, but normally Web Center will uh, cache the portlet in the web tier and you can configure this in the web cache. So most of the times you will specify do not cache by default because we will cache it uh, on a separate level. And then we can press finish. And now you will see that JDeveloper will create all these files. Uh, the most important file is the portlet.xml and people who have worked with Web Center before PS3 uh, will see a big difference because before PS3 we had only the portlet.xml as an X file, uh, XML file sorry, which is the source. So this was how it was before PS3. You need to make modifications here. You need to know the XML format and you need to know where to uh, edit the values. Now we have the design which is more a wizard kind of view which is much better. It's much much easier and it gives uh, a nicer overview of your portlet, of your, in fact, your producer, because the portlet XML is a descriptor file for your producer. And as you can see, we have a top portlets where we can see a list of all the registered portlets. We have created our input portlet, this is the first one. Uh, in a few minutes, we will create a second one, uh, which will be added here as a portlet. So we have our view.gspx which is an ADF page, the same for edit.gspx and jdeveloper will automatically add an input text for each preference and uh, a command button which will save all these uh, values to the container. So we don't need to take care of anything, jdeveloper will create this automatically. We only need to design the view.gspx and this is exactly what we are going to do now. So we will create an input text and a command button. The input text uh, will be available for the users to put their value in and the command button will pass the value to whichever portlet um, it's listening. So before we need to do that uh, we need to create a Java class to store the actual value. So we'll right click our project and from the general uh, section specify Java class and we'll give it the input bean name package will be portlet.beans okay and we register this class as a managed bean in the faces config so I hope you all know what uh, I'm talking about when I'm talking about managed beans and stuff like that uh, class name is input bean portlet.beans because GSF is basic stuff you need to know about Web Center. Uh, if you don't know about GSF then uh, it's time to learn Web Center and uh, you should get to know uh, GSF quite well before you start uh, with Web Center. So I've created my input bean as a managed bean and now I can start working on my view.gspx. First of all I'm going to drop a panel form layout to put my uh, input text and command button in. So input text, put it here. Instead of label, I specify parameter one and a command button. All right. And I put it in the footer and I say save. 
Now, in our input bin, we need to create uh, a parameter or an attribute to store the actual value from the user. So, private string will be param, for example. Create the accessor. That's it. And now we can bind it uh, here and the input text as a value. Uh, that's input bean param. So now when we press the submit button, this attribute will get the value specified by the user. Now remove param one, save one also. Okay. So there are two things that we need to do now to finish this portlet and this created the actual parameter and write the Java code uh, that will be executed by this button. So first of all we will be creating the parameter. This is done in the portlet.xml. Now parameters are created on a producer level so not on a portlet level. Uh, people who have worked with WebCenter before PS3 um, they will know about the oracle portlet.xml where we need to register the parameter with the portlet itself while the GSR286 standard specifies that we register a parameter uh, as a public parameter over the, the producer so when we open the portlet.xml we have a section parameters where we can create parameters just press the plus button specify a name and identifier oh, specify param1 or whatever and now we need to register these parameters to each portlet that requires the usage of this parameter so select the portlet tab specify your portlet and then we can select in the parameters tab we have here a list of all the parameters specified from here so on the left are all the available and we have to move it to the right to select it. So now this parameter is registered as a parameter for this portlet which means that we can use it, we can uh, set it and we can get the actual value. And this is exactly what we are going to do now. So from our command button we will execute some Java code that will set the value of the parameter. So select the command button and we'll go to action listener edit select our managed bean and we'll create a new method uh, method to save okay and now we can implement this method and you set the the value of the parameter on the action response so we need to get a reference uh, to the action response of the portlet. So the action response is actually an object on the faces context. It's on the external context. So first of all we need to get oh double context. Yeah. Uh, the current instance, then the external context and then the response. And there it is and because it's defined as an object we need to cast it to the action response All right. and now it's very easy on the response we have the method set render parameter which has two uh, parameters uh, the first one is the name of the parameter which is specified in the portlet.xml and the second one is the actual value which is our attribute specified here so this value must match the value specified here so this and this must be the same it's case sensitive so make sure that it's the same and that's all we need to do uh, let me just check we have our input text where the user will specify a value when he presses the save button our code will be triggered and this value will be set on the action response which is exactly what we want now if you are used to working with ADF um, you might put something like uh, this 
on your command button. So ADF works a lot with Ajax uh, to present the user with, with uh, a modern user experience um, without refreshing the complete page. Uh, this actually causes issues uh, when you're working with portlets, especially when you're trying to put some parameters on the action response. Because when we're working with Ajax, it's a partial submit, which means that the lifecycle of the portlet is not really triggered as it should be, and the action response and request is not available. So when you try to execute this uh, with a partial submit equals true, then you will get a nasty error saying that he cannot convert some proxy class to uh, the action response. So this is because uh, you have to partial submit. So you can never use partial submit uh, when you are trying to set uh, a parameter. So that's it for our first portlet. Now let's create the second portlet, the one that will uh, output the actual value. So right click the project and specify portlets. Again, the same steps as in the beginning. And instead of input, we'll say output portlet, the class output portlet rest can be the same. Also default, specify ADF faces GSPX, same goes for here. Next, next, all default, finish. So now we have two classes. Now we take a look at the class, you will see he extends the ADF bridge portlet, uh, which is the class created by ADF uh, with the ADF bridge because uh, the GSR286 standard specifies how portlets uh, should react or work with the container based on GSP, but it does not say how the lifecycle of GSF will be implemented in portlets, so that's why Oracle came up with this bridge, uh, which allows us to create GSF portlets or portlets that use ADF uh, technology. But in the end, uh, when we click uh, on it and go through, you will see he extends the Java X portlet faces generic faces portlet. When you click on it, he extends the generic portlet. So this is exactly uh, what it should do according to the standard. All right. So now let's create the uh, actual uh, portlet. We also need to create a new managed bean for it. We can use the same bean, but uh, it's a good practice to use different managed beans for different portlets. So let's create a new Java class. Say output bean, put it in beans, that's fine. And here we will create a method public string uh, get param and in this method we will uh, get the value of the parameter. Uh, in the previous portlet we set the value of the parameter by executing the set uh, render parameter on the action response. Getting the parameter is done on the request. So uh, we need to get a reference to the portlet request which is on the, is done on the same way so we get the current instance of the faces context the external context get request and we need to cast it to the portlet request portlet request that's it and getting the value it's fairly easy. It's just say get parameter. And we need to specify the name. So also the value here must match exactly as specified here. So output bean. This, that's it. Return. Um, 
in the first portlet we have registered the parameter to the portlet and we need to do this here also so go to the portlet.xml go to portlets and now we have two portlets in the list which is fine select the output portlet from the parameters tab we need to register the parameters as well so if you don't do this then this portlet will not uh, or he will not be able to read the value of the parameter so this is a very important step if you forget this uh, it will not work and that's about it for our coding now we can create the gspx page for our output portlet which is very easy oh right I need to register my output bean as a managed bean so output bean portlet dot beans uh, sorry output bean portlet dot beans so session all right let's save it and let's go to the view.gspx of our output portlet and we'll just have an output text here and as a value specify output bean uh, I'm just adding a little value before it so that's it that should work now in order to test this this is a little bit more difficult because portlets cannot run uh, on their self they always need to run in a context of a portal so you just can't say right click and run uh, this won't work so in order to test them you need to deploy them uh, on an actual weblogic server and you need to register these portlets uh, as a producer to an actual application so this is exactly what we are going to do now so let's deploy it right click on your project and say oh wait just one more thing uh, first we are going to change the context root of our uh, application so right click on the project say project properties java ee application and remove uh, all this from the context root so it's a little bit more it's a little bit smaller so that's easier because we will this will be added uh, to the URL to register the producer so it's a lot easier all right and now we can deploy it we have to make a new deployment profile and it's a portlet so uh, we need to deploy it as a war file in the end it will create a near file so uh, deployment profile name can remain the same does not really matter and everything here is okay by default so we don't need to change anything okay right click deploy web app application server alright before you do this uh, make sure that your integrated uh, weblogic server of jdeveloper is running if it isn't running just say run start server instance and he will start your server wait until he says integrated weblogic server started and then you can deploy so when this is done right click on your project say deploy application server and select integrated weblogic server next and finish and jdeveloper will see that we have created a portal.xml so he recognizes it as a producer um, webcenter works with WSRP which stands for web service for remote portlets so if you work with other portals like liferay or IBM or, or whatever most of them uh, they are working with native portlets so you just deploy an ear file and you can use the portlets in the portal while webcenter works differently uh, it only works with WSRP so the reason for this is scalability if you uh, deploy portlets on a different server than your portal then it's very easy to scale only your portal or only your portlet 
so this is quite good and you might think well it uses a lot of web services which is XML which causes a lot of overhead but uh, this process is quite optimized by Oracle it's working very good and the performance uh, is, is really good so there's no need to bother about this so in this step uh, JDeveloper will notice that you have portlets and he will create all the assets uh, to convert the portlet to WSRP he will create a lot of XML files a lot of um, whistles which are uh, required to register your portlet if you're not using JDeveloper then you need to create them manually and this is a lot of work so press yes so he will create them for you say ok and here in the deployment you can follow the process of the deployment it usually takes uh, not that long when everything is done JDeveloper will output the actual URL so that's this you copy this and you go to your favorite browser and you paste the URL now when you're working on a local host uh, you get the IP address I always change this because my IP address changes also quite a lot so this is the test page well test page it's not really a test page it's an overview page of your portlet uh, it will display all the portlets that are available in your producer and you have links to the WSRP uh, which I was talking about and you need these links to register your portlet so leave the page open and meanwhile I will go back to JDeveloper and I will create the application to consume these portlets so just go to file new application webcenter portal application press OK and we'll say portlet test next everything is fine press finish and webcenter uh, project will be created with all the assets, resource catalogs, navigation models and so on and so forth so when this is done we need to register uh, our portlet as our producer um, within the application so JDeveloper is done in the application resource all the connections are managed here and a producer is a connection so first of all go back to your browser and click on the WSRP v2 whistle and copy the URL copy go back to JDeveloper right click connections new connection uh, where is my WSRP producer um, you need to specify a name so just say portlets or whatever you like and then you need to specify the URL which is the one we just copied press next now he will read th the content of that WSDL and you can specify the timeout if required if you use security you can configure it here we're not using them for now so just press finish alright so if you open them you see WSRP and the two portals are available here now we don't need to do anything else just right click your portal project and say run so now he is deploying the portal project to our integrated web logic server and uh, when everything is done uh, there we have it so now web center is starting all right I log in with web logic web logic one because we are going to add these portlets at runtime so now just go to edit mode by pressing ctrl shift e 
this is our composer, add content, this will open our resource catalog and by default the standard uh, resource catalog contains um, a folder that will display all the portlets if we have registered them and you see this is our producer and we can add both of them so let's click on input portlet just wait until it's added All right. as you can see it takes a while this is because uh, now the integrated weblogic server is starting the actual portlet and when this is done we can add our output portlet this also will take some time that's it we can close it and we can close this okay so now we have our portlets on our page and we can test it so we have our output portlet our input portlet and our little pencil so we can personalize it and we can actually set our title so if everything goes well when I specify a parameter here say value or whatever I press save it will automatically be displayed here and there you have it value as you can see because he doesn't use Ajax he completely refreshes this page and well this page this portlet and this portlet the actual page stays the same he only refreshes the portlets and the way web center works is that he looks at the parameters that are configured for each portlet and if they have the same name then web center will automatically wire them together and refreshes the portlets when one of the parameters changes so in previous versions of web center we need to wire them together uh, by configuring page parameters and setting partial triggers and it's quite a lot of work it was quite difficult quite confusing for most people well nowadays it's very easy it's done automatically so as you can see from the work we've done it's very easy just a few lines of code when we take a look at it setting the parameter is just these lines getting the value of the parameter is just these lines and that's it all the rest is done by uh, web center itself so very easy never forget to register the where's my portlet xml never forget to register the parameters to your portlet.xml so here specify parameters you need to select them the same for all your parameters where you want to use uh, sorry the same for all your portlets you want to use these parameters and that's it so uh, it's quite easy and the latest version of web center uh, especially if you worked with other versions of web center so this is how interportal communication works uh, based on parameters I hope this was useful if you have tips comments questions just let me know and uh, I can answer them thanks for watching see you next time